This week on Persona 5, our protagonist, Yu, says some philosophical shit in the middle of an intersection which makes us question his intelligence. A comet feels bad for him and gives him superpowers. Our hero takes to using his powers for the greater good, like looking at girls' naughty bits and cheating on tests. Because life is hard, Yu isn't allowed to get away with his heroic actions of pretending to be smart and getting the girl, getting caught in the act by Professor Xavier's A-Team, Cypher and Quicksilver. Some more forceful foreshadowing takes place, Desu and our hero and his lolly are promptly relocated to Hoshino Umi Academy for further surveillance. This week on Angel Beats 2! Yu wakes up and gets ready for his first day and is shocked to find a handsome stranger in his home, only to find out it's only him and bids adieu to his lolly. The camera gets its close-up and Yu inadvertently insults Cypher, proceeding to be in check for the rest of the episode. Everybody eats food, then Cerebro Saito detects a new mutant. They locate Shiro Kengo and tell him to stop selling his lewd psychic photos, the pervert. Cypher takes Yu to show him her fucked up bro with good musical taste and it's kinda spooky and sad. And then he goes home to his lolly who ruins the episode again. This week on A Certain Magical Ghost Bitch, our non-protagonist falls in love as he experiences real food for the first time. Moist Saito gets the map all wet again and it's up to our espers to run through CG alleys and mortally wound a man. We're introduced to a mentally handicapped idol and a ghost with a temper tantrum tries to burn the building down but somehow misses. Our team concocts a plan with more half-baked than the marshmallows involving taking out a group of trained thugs with no resistance whatsoever. We're given some last-minute feels as the ghost friend zones her old friend. Our lolly ruins the episode again and we abruptly cut to a trailer of Fallout 4. Okay, we start off our morning with some delicious lolly French toast. Yusa works her magic at school. Jojiro freaks out, surprising absolutely no one. Then, in a classic Maida twist, we head for the park for some baseball, baseball, and more baseball. In fact, we play baseball for 20 more minutes. Then, after a Deus Ex Machina win by Hoshino Umi, now performs a secret experiment and we return home for some delicious lolly curry. In this episode of Mida is a Hack, Charlotte is beaten up by bullies and pulled straight from Kuragaya's route while the subs heavily exaggerate the event. Somebody decides to bring an actual director onto the team, allowing us to finally get some well-placed character development. A Saito character is confirmed to satisfy Mida's not-so-secret Hikaru Midorikawa fetish before we finally go back home to the biggest twist of the episode. The lolly doesn't ruin it this time. On this episode of Dora the Explorer, Yu steals his heroic resolve to murder Jojiro but gets cock-blocked by Now Now. The gang gets into the mystery machine and heads towards the monster of the week. A shocking reveal! Ayumi actually has friends! Maida continues to subtly push the Now XU ship further by having them talk in sync. We see a new gameplay trailer for Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Lolly. Ayumi is cornered by a plot device and forced to activate her power, sacrificing herself in the process. At long last, the lolly is dead. Fuck! This time in Angel Beats, Dango strikes back. Our now Hiki protagonist, Tomoya, uh, Yu, is overcome with bereavement for his delicious lolly, French toast, and throws some noodles at his concerned ex. Jojo isn't funny, and Yu spooks some FBI in an old dude and then runs away. In a town far, far away, Anakin gets given some suspicious salad and then decides to go to the arcade. With his stomach full of clanad, he finds the arcade a bit too exciting and beats some dudes up. This turns him to the dark side and he dangles someone's eye. Before Anakin turns to Darth Vader, Padme kicks away his dank memes and returns the status quo. Or so we think. This week on Char Loot, Prosuagonist is all better now because he keeps it real. After heading to school and being summoned for something that you'd think would actually be important, the group is force-fed some how low can we go hello and now now reviews it perfectly. Our OTP sets up a date for some post rock, aka good music, and go about their day. Until June Mida shows up, then after a full day of being the best, tops it off by using the power of music to raise the dead and shit. Sasuga, Mida. Sasuga. On this week's episode of Improbable, the flashback or ace in the whole you struggles with the age-old issue of how to dress to impress. Arriving fashionably late, Yu finds now equipped with a ponytail of charisma plus two, leading to much awkward blushing. Zien, despite sounding like a Metal Gear villain, commences their concert, and Yu mistakes it for a Screamo concert. His thrashing and screaming is brought to a halt, presumably by a chair to the head. We're informed that the previous eight episodes have all been dreamed up by Yu while hypnotized by WMP's drug-like visual options. We meet a bunch of random people topped off by the introduction of the long-lost Nissan across between Hyoin Kilma and Christopher Robin. In this week's episode of Charlotte, Ho in Kyoma! I mean, the Onichan successfully time leaps in order to save the world and his little sister while they're at it. He finds the rest of the X-Men, and after time leaping through hundreds of wasted birthday cakes and story potential, he finally builds Mutant Academy. Fast forward to the future, Sisko on Onichan is convinced to use his power to become Ho in Kyoma and save his lolly. He goes back and steals her power, and despite their plan being delayed by Yusuf's spit, they ultimately defeat Yandere-chan, and the lolly lives to see another day. This week on Charlotte, episode Charlotte, where we find out about Charlotte without seeing Charlotte and hey the story to start taking itself seriously. Our new protagonist sees Yu as a threat to the stability of the power user's lives and combines him to the facility while Ayumi just goes along with everything. Yu has fun with his new friends and only spares a moment with her now 
now, rip our other two main cast. Shit goes down and all my family couldn't ruins everything, causing Pooh and Nana to get captured, tortured, and the Brotherhood decides to send their final trump card after to save them. Most things go horribly wrong and he loses his make everything better power, causing Pooh to die saving Nana, and then they fucking torched it! On this episode, you wakes up and is greeted by another round of trauma and bitching from Death by Coon. After a few episodes of You Fed by Friends, we sidetrack to see some actual development for the side characters we haven't seen for three episodes. You visits Kyosuke and despairs over him hiding in the dark reading mag, I mean grieving over Kumagami. He comes back to be greeted by now after a very <coughs> heartwarming confession scene, and you is convinced to travel around the world and rid it of all the X-Men, starting with his own friends. We end the episode saying goodbye to the side characters and to the sister that Yusa never even knew was there. In this week's episode, and the finale of Charlotte, you goes to save the world without even saying bye to you. Ironically, this episode is his struggle to maintain sanity and a sense of purpose with a great CN song playing as an insert track. But he makes it out alive before almost dying to fake courage that he took from Naga's ultimate lolly. Now shares our relief as the series. 